thank you for tuning in. I wanted to answer some questions as it relates to the drone panorama app that I've been developing for Inspire One. First off, thank you guys for all the feedback and all the beta testers that are using the Inspire One. Now, one question has been whether or not this is going to support the Phantom. I don't have a DJI Phantom, but definitely have plans to support that in the future. Another question is, how much is this app going to cost? Well, guess what? As I like to do with most of my content, I just want to put it out there and make it available for free. So don't worry about having to pay money for the app. If you have an Inspire One and an iPad, you get it for free. And the number one question that I get asked is, how does drone pan work? How do you use it? And what I'd like to do next is show you some of the steps you need to go through to get a good panorama, as well as process the imagery on the ground with a stitching program such as PT GUI or AutoPano Pro for creating the panorama and getting it ready for web format. While developing drone pan, I focused on trying to make this as simple as possible. So what you'll normally do is make sure that you're connected in the DJI Go app. So let's go ahead and take a look at the camera view. What I wanted to do with drone pan was avoid reinventing the wheel. The DJI Go app has great functionality already. So I recommend getting in here, checking your exposure value, any of the settings that you prefer. When you're ready, you can then launch drone pan. You'll see that it'll connect, give you the FPV view, show you your battery status, altitude, which is currently a bug. We haven't got that working yet, but we will. The yaw and pitch of the gimbal, and then a play button to start the panorama. And originally, drone pan took 48 photos, about three and a half minutes in the air, and after doing some research on the field of view of the camera, We've been able to take that down to 20 photos and those photos take about a minute and a half to complete. So let me just demonstrate the process. I'll click the play button to start the process. You'll see that photos will be taking. The gimbal will then yaw 60 degrees, take six photos. The gimbal reset, pitch down 30 degrees, and then take another set of six photos then it's going to go through its third set it'll pitch down so the gimbal is pointed down 60 degrees it will then take another six photos and then for the fourth and final loop it'll point straight down and take a photo with the gimbal pointed forward spin 180 degrees and take another with the gimbal pointed backwards the panorama is then done. You can select OK. You can actually use the live FPV view to maybe fly to another location. Hit the play button again and you'll do another series of 20 photos for your next panorama. And at any point during the process you can just click the stop button. If you want to stop the process, select yes. Then your gimbal will reset and be ready for you to start over. Here are 20 photos that I took from the Inspire One using drone pan at about 200 feet in the air. So you can see that they're all spaced out at about 60 degrees. Then the gimbal pitches down. And what I'll do now is I'll run these through PT GUI and we'll have a nice stitched panorama. Now earlier I mentioned PT GUI as well as Auto Pano. Now I bought licenses to both. I like PT GUI because of its simplicity and it covers everything within one piece of software. AutoPano, on the other hand, does, in my opinion, a better job of stitching those tough images where overlap might not be as good as you like. But once you do that, you actually need to purchase AutoPano Tour to be able to take your panorama and make it web available. PT GUI has that feature built in, so that's what I'm going to use in this video. I'll go ahead and dive into PT GUI. We're going to load our images, and here are our 20 that I'll open. You can see the 20 thumbnails being loaded, and all you need to do now is click Align Images, and that process will begin. You can see our alignment here. Now, let me also mention that PT GUI and AutoPano both offer free trial versions, so I recommend downloading that. That's what I did first. Your image will be watermarked with their 
logo all over it, but at least it's a good way to give it a test. So you can see it did a good job of aligning it images. Now one thing that I'm working on is to be able to get more of the sky above the horizon and that will be coming in a future update. So for now we're going to leave these settings alone. I'll go back to our main window and click create panorama. You can see that it'll specify an output folder and name. We'll leave the defaults and I'll click create panorama and now this actually begins the stitching process. The stitch took about two minutes and you'll see that this panorama JPEG was created. We have a nice panorama that now will load into the web tool. So back in PTGUI there is a tools menu and under that we'll click publish to website and I'll go ahead and add our panorama file. So we'll select that and you have all sorts of settings here. Normally I just leave the defaults to give it a test. You can give it a title for the page, your field of view, and we click convert. Now once that's done, we'll go back to our main directory and you can see there's a HTML page with 15 images. And we'll go ahead and open this in Firefox. And here you can see our panorama stitched nicely together. Now in full screen view this looks pretty amazing. Now you'll see that where there should be sky that's black and in an upcoming video I'll talk about what we can do about that. And if we look down you can see that the two photos that were taken at the end are used to fill any sort of hole that sometimes may show up in your panorama imagery. And that's how you stitch using PT GUI. And before I wrap up, I just want to share a couple of panoramas taken by one of our beta testers. Now these are just truly amazing. This is from Gross Dam in Boulder, Colorado. You can see here the front of the dam. And then another one taken from the top or the other side of the dam, which I think you'll agree that the imagery looks pretty amazing. So if you guys are interested in helping beta test, Here's my email address. You can shoot me an email and I'll add you to the test list. And I hope this video was useful in explaining how to use DronePan. We'll definitely continue to improve it and get it submitted to the App Store as soon as possible. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.